So, the third one is a specific group of people gets isolated for God for the future. The fourth is the golden thread towards Christ starts here. The birth of Christ where the line where Christ will be born starts here. The fifth is it shows us God's abundant grace with a promising future. Yes. The what? Which chapter? Which chapter? Are you in your chapter 11 verse 10 to 32? Okay, we go back. There you are. You see it? Jacobina? Oh, thank you. Okay. Okay, and then number six is the, the good and the bad gets revealed by people's choices. When you look at from chapter 12. For two centuries after Babel, after the, what happened in Babel, it's 200 years. We find no history in the Bible. What happened? Nothing is written about 200 years after what happened at Babel. Because that was the time when the different races moved all over the earth. And new cultures were developed. The problem was that over this period the knowledge of God began to grow faint. Do you know what can happen? Do you know what can happen in 200 years for people not hearing about God and people start living their own ways all over the world? And that's what happens here. And this brings us to the very important part about Abram and his father, Tira, that stepped on the scene. Yes. But that's not any, uh, that's, that's after the, the, the building of the, 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 the tower. Yeah, yeah. Now, it's after the building of, 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 of Babel, and, and, and the Lord gave him all certain kind of tongues, and so they spread all but over you the have, world. You have, you have, uh, overslap. Yeah, we haven't dealt about it yet. We, we didn't deal about the Babel, because we, we, we don't, didn't have time, but you, you will find it then in, in uh, Okay, uh, okay. Okay. You will find it in, in chapter what, 10. For what you tell for the, the, the yeah. for me. Sorry, but yeah, there are a lot of things I can't I we well, can't talk about. Okay, it's, it's, it's so awesome. where we are, yeah. Okay. Okay, good. So you are with us. Okay? Yes. Now verse 10 and 11 shows it's clearly that Sim had to have kept some sort of records of the generation. If you read Genesis 11, verse 10 and 11, you read, these are the generations of Shem. And when it says, these are the generations of Shem or Jacob or whoever, then that person that is named was the one that held the gener genealogy of the people. Why do the English people always do such funny words? I don't know. <laughs> <coughs> okay, so, but here is some, a couple of uh, interesting facts. Listen now. Tira was the ninth generation after the flood. If you go and read the names, and this, is, uh, this one has this son, and that son, and that son, you will read that uh, Tira was the ninth generation after the flood. Shem and Noah still lived in the time when Tira lived. You don't read in the Bible, but when you look at the years, they, 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 they've changed. Noah lived until Tira was 128 years old. So, they knew each other, or knew about each other. And Sim was 97 years old, there, you mentioned it yesterday. 97 years old at the time of the flood. Oh, it's 98, though. <laughs> it says he is 100 years old, two years after the flood. Yeah. So he's 98. 98? Yeah. Okay. So we, shall we argue about one year? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe his birthday was in the Okay. Half. Yeah. <laughs> so I was just wondering, uh, we read nothing about it. But on the age of 97, 98 years old, or 97 or 98, did he have any children? 
Yes. Yes. Could be. Uh, but then, you... then there was a problem, and that was they didn't go with him into the ark. On the age of ninety-seven, he went into the into the ark. Before the, the... after flood, after the the flood, he was ninety-seven years old mm -hmm. when the when the flood ended. Mm -hmm. So, but the Bible don't tell us anything about it. Okay, about that children. But what? <coughs> There is no circumstances that she uh, were in with her son and daughters in. Yeah, into the ark. Yeah, just then if he, if he had children. But they didn't have any children in the ark. No. Because the, the only people that left the ark were, were Noah, his wife, and his three sons, and his three, and his three uh, school daughters. Okay. Now, what is important to note? is how the ages get less and less from generation to generation after the flood. You read it and then you find that Eber, Eber was 464 years until Pelech who were 239. Then Sirach 230 until Naur 148. Tira, 205 to Abram got 175 years, Isaac uh, 180 and Jacob 149 and Joseph 110 until Moses and that's why Moses have written in Psalm 90 verse 10 the days of our lives are 70 years and if by reason or strength they are 80 years yet their boast is only labor and sorrow so that's the normal age people get is 70 and if they're strong 80 or perhaps a bit more than that, but not 400, 500, 600 years because of what happened when the, at the flood, the change of a climate and everything that has changed. Okay, so the first generation, and, and, and you, you, you can read it in the books and you can believe me when I give you this, this figures now, that is the first generation after the flood were 32 people. If you read the sons of Sem, Ham and Yafet, the first generation was 32 people. With the second generation, there were 171 people. And the third generation was 902. And the generations get calculated at the generation for more or less 33 years. And according to normal growth, if you multiply this plus this, you know, at the end it's getting bigger and bigger. And then at the. Somebody is knocking? No, it was a chair. Okay. So, by the time Abram moved to Canaan, there were 11 generations already, and with a population growth of more or less 500 percent, <coughs> they were on 533, but we make it less than that, it's 500 percent. The population at that time when Abram lived could easily have been about 300 million people. That's the people that lived on the earth when Abram was on the <laughs> point. Come. Okay, so let's look at verse 18 to 25. This describes the period from Pelech to Abram, which is a period of 222 years. And the patriarchs, and that's the, the patriarchs, you know what that is? The father, the... Alf, as fathers, yeah, okay. From Pelech to Abram do, did not get named in Genesis 10. When you read Genesis 10, you don't read about them. But you read about them in, 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 in uh, chapter 11. If you look at verse 26 to 28, then it describes the period from Terah until Abram. Because the important part is, the Lord wants to come to one man and one generation from whom Christ will be born. And now, Noah had how many sons? How many sons? Three. And from the generation of Sim 
Terah was born, and Terah also had three sons named Abram, Naor, and Haran. So we're coming closer to what we are going to teach on about Abram that starts and on chapter 12. After him, why, why, sorry, yes. why, why is he uh, not telling in chapter 10? Well, in chapter 11. Yeah, why, why is the, 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 the line from Perak to Abraham not mentioned in chapter 10, but in 11? Because chapter 10 is dealing with the, with the dispersion of the heathen nations, and in 11 it comes to, to Abraham when the line of what he wants to tell us about Abram. So that's nothing to do with, with Abram. We, we, we learn in chapter 11 about Abram. That's why you, we are, you've got it chapter 11. Okay. Yeah. Okay. After Shem, Tira kept registered up to date. Verse 27, you see, this is the genealogy, that funny word of Terah. Okay? And after him, who? Isaac. You will, you will read that in Genesis 25 verse 19. This is the genealogy of Isaac, Abram's son, Abram begot Isaac, and after that. Terah still lived until Isaac was... 35 years old. We, you'll read now later about Terah. Who was Terah? He was the grandfather of Isaac. He was the father of Abram. Terah was the father of Abram. And Abram was the father of Isaac. But they left Terah at the top there at Ur. And you will see later that Abram moved from there. So uh, little Isaac grew older. And when he was 35 years old, Terah died. So no, the Bible doesn't teach us if he visited him or not visited him, but he was, he was already, when, when he died, he was 35 years old. And this brings us now to verse 29 and verse 30 in Genesis 11. And Abram and Nahor took them wives. That's the two sons of Terah. The name of Abram's wife was Sarai. And the name of Nahor's wife Milcah, the daughter of Haran, the father of Milcah, and the father of Iscah. But Sarai was barren, she had no child. We see <coughs> that from Adam, uh, Adam, we see from Adam up till here, they still married into their families, the question that was asked. Up to here, they still married into the families. The, the genes wasn't a problem at, at that stage. Uh, even, uh, only later on the Lord stopped that. In Genesis 20 verse 2, he, you will see he, was, he is calling uh, Sarai who? My sister. <coughs> was he lying? <coughs> he was not lying. But he was lying. Because he told the half-truth. Because she was his wife. And you will see on the next lecture that why did he lie? He was afraid. And Abram said of Sarai's wife, She is my sister. And Abimelech, king of Gerar, sent and took Sarai. And from a genetic point viewpoint, it was a problem at that stage. It was prohibited by God at a later stage that he, he can marry his sister. And now we read in verse 30 that Sarai was barren because God allowed it. She didn't have any children until they came to Israel where they, or where the place that the Lord wanted them to be. Hello. How's your wife? Um, she goes to the doctor. Okay. At work. Okay. We will also pray for her. Okay, so we look at Genesis 11, verse 31 and 32. And Terah took Abram, his son, and Lot, to, Lot the son of Haran, his son's son, and Sarah, his daughter-in-law, his, uh, his son, Abram's wife. And they went forth with him from Ur of the Chaldeas to go into the land of Canaan. And they came 
unto Haran and dwelt there. And the days of Terah were two hundred and five years, and Terah, Terah died in Haran. So where are they moving to? God said to them they must move to Canaan. But Tira moves up to Ur. Listen, and if you look at the uh, if you look at the map, you will see that he when you move from from where he stayed up to Ur, it was past Babel, Babylon. So he remembered that God spoke to people here and about that disobedience. But he moved with his children to Haran and uh, to Ur, and Ur was a wicked city with a lots of idols. So when Tira moved past Babylon, he must have remembered what God's judgment was on those people. He was not unfamiliar with what happened in Babylon. He knew what happened there, because they were not obedient. But still, he went past that place. And Tira could never, ever withstand the influence of Haran. The prosperous city of Trey was a prosperous city on the main route between Syria and Canaan. And the result was that Tira established himself and his family in that city. He was disobedient. He would never listen. He would never ever again be able to get loose from his disobedient behavior and this teach us a lesson again that people make choices people are disobedient people don't get from God because they are not obedient but Abram on the other hand did not stay there in obedience he moved in faith and that's what you will see. Abram gave everything up. Abram said, I'm going to walk in faith. God said it. I believe it. And that settles it. So Abram gave everything to get the best. What did Abram give? He left his home, his land, and his family. Yes. My is out. Is, uh Will that tell that um, the whole family of Abraham was geroepen? Uh, was called. Okay, we will get to that. The influence of Abraham on his family. Uh, he, he was called, and because of his faith, the other people went with him. You say he was the father of Abraham. Pardon? He, he. He, sorry. He Abraham. was called. Abraham was called, and the rest followed him because of his faith. And we will get to that in later chapters, you will see. What did he leave? He left his home and he left the f his family, this is his grandfather and uncles and whoever was, was with him there. First, and he left, later on in chapter 13, he left Lot. He said, you can go. And then in chapter 21, he left his son Ishmael. He said, you must go. Because he was obedient to what God said. In, in, in chapter 22, you see that he gave his only son as a sacrifice. And number five, he even left the dead, Sarah, in chapter 23, where her grave was. He moved from there and he did <coughs> everything. So Abram was a man that listened to God and said, if God said, I will leave it. I give it to God. I give it into His hands. He left everything except God and His obedience to God. Now think for a moment. Do you think it was easy for Abraham to leave everything? Was it easy for you to leave everything and to come to the Bible school? Is it always easy to leave something and say, good, I'm going to leave that. I, I used to play golf and I like golf and at, at a certain stage the Lord tell me, I, th I'm a, I want you to leave it. 
I was I was uh, I, I had national colours in, in Angling, Angling against Germany and and, and well, thirty one years ago I was in, in Germany Angling and, and that was that was something for me and, and the Lord said to me, Give it to me. So I give it to him. There was a stage in my life when I had a, a second car and the Lord said to me, You must give this car to somebody else. I said, Lord, is it serious? He said, Yes. So I give the car to that man. And the Lord said, now that man will give it back to you. I was just testing you. Like sometimes God tests us and said, will you give this to me? And then he give it back to me. Or he even gives something bigger back to me. And that was with the life of Abram, you will see. How do we remember Tira? How do you remember Abram and how do you remember, remember Tira? And it's all about the, be the obedience, about chooses that they made. He left everything except God. And, and you'll read in Joshua 24, verse 22 and 3, the testimony what, what Joshua wrote about these people. And Joshua said to all the people, Thus says the Lord God of Israel, <coughs> Your fathers, including Terah, the father of Abram and the father of Nahor, dwelt on the other side of the river in old times, and they served other gods. Then I took your father Abram from the other side of the river, led him throughout all the land of Canaan, and multiplied his descendants and gave him Isaac. So what was written about Terah years after that? And what was written about Abram years after that. So you must think, and I must think, whenever I make a decision, is this from God? Where is this going to lead me? And what will be say, said of me after 10 years, 20 years, about my life, about the decisions that I've made? And it's all you must remember about decisions. I learn it and I say it to my son. Your decisions take you in a direction. And some of them are destruction. Tira knew, no, 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 he knew Noah. He, he, there was a, Noah was still alive when Tira lived. And he knew about him. He knew about the ark. He knew about everything. He knew how the Lord called him. And God's plan for Terah was not to die in Haran, and, uh, but Abram kept that promise of God alive. Probably the worst thing that can happen to you is when God's plan for your life fails because you place your own decisions above God's decisions. There's one thing that's very strong that must be broken, and that's my will. My will subjected to the will of God. Like all the people in Genesis 1 to 11, there are one or, decision, one or two decisions that we can make. You will find it from Genesis 1 right through the Bible. The first one is choose God's way as He determines it. And the second is choose my own way and pay the price for it later. And don't ask them, why is God letting this happen to me? I'm thinking about my own son. You mustn't, you mustn't watch up him. You mustn't talk about him. But he's making his own decisions on this moment. And I'll show you a picture. He was in the hospital yesterday. He was in an operation because he, he, I, I believe God is talking to him. And God is so full of love and full of grace. And he will, use, he will use anything to get your attention and to tell you and say, turn back. Come to me. There's a right place to be and there's a wrong place to be. The sad thing about Tira is that there was a time when God spoke to him and even made him the genealogy register up to let him keep that register up to date. Yes. I have one question about uh, speaking in tongues. Is that what you're doing now? Speaking in all the languages that you were born with? Me. Yeah. No, this is not speaking in tongues. Okay. Because if I was speaking in tongues, it would be a, would have been perfect. Okay. So how would you start speaking in tongues? So, but if you want, we, we can talk about that. What is speaking in tongues? That's a subject on its own. Okay. 
Good. <laughs> the, because there's the wonders of tongues and there's a the gift of tongues, there's a difference between that. And why is that? Why is there no link between the uh, Tower of Babel? What? No. And uh, the difference of uh, language scale? No. Okay. No. Okay. So 1 Corinthians 9 27 says, But I discipline my body and bring it unto subjection. You hear? I use my body and I bring it unto under subjection, lest when I have peace <coughs> to others, I myself should become disqualified. What did Tira do? He listened and he said, God said we must go to Canaan. But I'm going to take you to a bigger city, a better city. And later on we will move back. And then there come a time when I don't move back. Listen, I know about young people that was called by the Lord. They are old now. They are still unhappy. The unhappiest place to be is out of the center of God's will. And you can always come to Him. You can always come to Him. But there come a point of no return. Sometimes there comes a point of no return when God talk and talk and talk and talk and you don't want to listen and He said, okay, you go your own way. You go your own way now. Yeah? God's God? grace and His plan doesn't stop at one disobedient person. If you are disobedient, God will call somebody else. God will say, I will choose somebody else. And so that's where Abram came on the scene. Genesis 12 verse 1. And now, now, after that, the Lord has said to Abram, Get out of your country, from your family, and from your father's house, to a land that I will show you. Where is it? I'm not going to tell you. Move in faith. Take a step in faith. And when you read Genesis 12 until chapters 22, I've got about 17 sermons on that, on the life of faith. You will find valuable messages about faith that will we look on the next lectures. We will look on that, but I'm going to show you every chapter has got a main theme. And the first one is, the step in faith in chapter 12, you will find it. And we will look at it uh, at, in uh, the next lecture. The next one is the high price of taking that step in faith in chapter 13. And then in chapter 14, you find the power of faith. What happens when I trust God? The power of faith. And then you get to the security of faith. When I believe how God protects me. And then you get in, the, in chapter 16, the faith of the fleshly. When somebody is walking with the Lord, but is doing still his own will, going into Hagar and where Ishmael was born. So that can happen in a man's life. And then you see in chapter 17, the potential of our faith. It's where he was circumcised. What was the potential of his faith? What can happen? And the promises that God gave to him. And then the seventh is the prayer of faith. In chapter 18, you remember, if you read it, when he was praying for Lot and Sodom and Gomorrah. Sodom and Gomorrah in English. In the, in the tongue, when you're speaking tongues. The difference in faith is in Genesis 19. Why is Genesis 19 there when, when Lot was uh, the fire and brimstone? It shows you the difference in faith, what happened to the man that didn't believe and don't want to believe and make his own choices between him and Abraham. And then you get to chapter 20 and then... Now you don't understand what potholes is because we are changing into a third world in South Africa and that is when you drive in the roads that these big 4x4 cars is not a luxury anymore it's sometimes it's a necessity because sometimes you drive in the roads you get holes like this 
big holes like Genian and you must drive a path around them. You can't drive in the streets some places there because of what we are becoming and I'm not going to say any more about that but that's the potholes. A pothole is something that's lying ahead of you and when you drive there you know there's a pothole and the next time when I go past there I know there's a pothole and I must be aware of because of the pothole and that's why I call it the pothole in Abram's life because the same thing that happened when he said she's not my sister happened to him again. Pardon? Good. You've got it now. Okay. Fantastic. <laughs> then, chapter 21. It is the consequences of my faith. <coughs> what is the consequences? The influence, whatever you can call it. And then the last chapter in chapter 22, when he sacrificed his son Isaac, the evidence. What is the evidence? that I'm living in faith. Today there's a lot of decisions to make. And my decision in faith can change <coughs> my entire life. And there comes times where I don't know what to do. But the God knows what to do and sometimes I must wait on God. God is mighty slow, but He's never late. Okay? In Afrikaans, there's three things. My wife usually say there's three things that she can't handle. Suk, suckle, and wach. What's that in English? Seek, struggle, and wait. To seek, struggle, and wait. And sometimes, Abram, you will see, he had to wait. Sometimes he had to move. Listen to the voice of God. Yes, Robert. How, how would you describe the, the potential of faith? Like what is what the faith is able to be doing? What 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 can happen? What can happen when I believe? What is the yeah? What what is the the potential? The yeah. you understand? Yeah. Okay. And. History took a turn when Abram was stepping on the scene in faith and then the next lecture will be on the first leap of faith and that's chapter 12. So now, you've got one, you've got six minutes, one minute, because, yeah, you took five minutes of me so you, I'll give you three minutes to say what spiritual lesson did I learn? And what does it tell me about my personal life? And what actions should I take concerning what I have learned? And I hope that every one of you will say on the last one, I will never do anything out of the will of God. Make a commitment.